So you want to buy a Line 6 amp modeling pedal board and you are not sure if to buy the Podgo, the HX Stomp, the Helix LT or the Helix Floor? You want to better know their main characteristics and the main differences between these four units? Well, I think that this video is gonna help you. Let's find out together which one of these four units better suit your needs. Hello everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we will share a direct comparison between the Line 6 Pod Go, the HX Stomp, the Helix LT and the Helix Floor. We will do it with the help of a very detailed comparison chart for checking out all the main characteristics of the four units in order to verify which one is the best unit according to your needs and which one offers the best value for money. So I hope you enjoy and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell as it's gonna really help me to make more videos like this. Let's start! We will now check the main differences between these four units among the following parameters. DSP power, number of amps, caps and microphones built in, third party IRs, number of patches and banks, number of effects and effect change management, MIDI possibilities, audio input and outputs, full switches and expression pedals, screen sites, looper capabilities, ADA conversion and USB channels available, special features available, current power, dimension, weight and price. Please notice that I will try to highlight in green the standout features and in red I will say the weakest one of each unit. First of all, the Helix Floor and the Helix LT share the same DSP power, provided by two DSP chips, while the HX Stomp has one DSP chip and the Podgo should have a chip with 90% of the power of the HX Stomp. We will see later on in this comparison chart the impact of this choice that is mostly in the limitation of the effect chain blocks and the level of parallel effects you can run at the same time. They all have in common the number of amps, caps and mics they offer that are 83 amps, 39 caps and 16 mics built in. It is worth noticing that with the Line 6 pedal boards you can set the mic distance but not the mic position. While for instance with other units like the GT1000 you can set both the position and the distance. I'm really upset and it is really a bummer that Line 6 does not allow us to set the mic position as in my opinion it has a big impact on the sound. They all offer the possibility to load third party IRs and we have 128 user slots available for all the units. The only difference here is that the Podgo can load IRs up to 1024 sample points while all the other units can load 2048 sample points IRs that should be of an higher quality than the 1024 ones. As regards preset, we have 256 presets in the Podgo distributed in two sets of 32 banks each of four patches. The HX Stomp offers 126 presets with 42 banks of three patches while the Helix LT and the Floor both offer 1024 presets distributed in 8 sets of 32 banks each of 4 patches. The snapshot offered are 4 for each preset in the Podgo, 3 in the HX Stomp, 8 in the Helix LT and the Helix LT Floor, where a snapshot is a collection of 64 parameters that you can change very quickly overcoming the typical time lag you have when you change a preset. All the units have basically the same number of effects, more than 200, but in the effect chain management we have one of the biggest differences in these units. In fact the Podgo can manage up to 10 effects all serial, not parallel. The HX Stomp can load up to 6 effects with both parallel and serial effect chains where the Helix LT and the Floor offer up to 32 serial or parallel blocks. So basically with the Helix LT or Floor you can really be more creative as you can create pretty complex effect chains where the Podgo is pretty limited with its only serial effect chain. And the HX Stomp offers the possibility to load parallel effects chain but only in 6 blocks. A future firmware update is rumored to bring more blocks for the HX Tom. All the units but the Podgo offer MIDI ports. As regards I.O., the Podgo has a guitar input, a stereo FX loop, balanced stereo output and amp out and an headphone out. 
the HX Tomp has two inputs, two FX loops, balanced and unbalanced stereo outputs, and an headphone out. The LXLT has a guitar in, two FX loops, balanced and unbalanced stereo outputs, and an headphone output. And finally, the LX Floor has a really a pretty impressive amount of inputs and outputs. It has all the in and outs of the LXLT plus a mic in, an aux in, and four FX loops instead of two. The PodGo has eight foot switches and an expression pedal. The HX Tomp has three foot switches and no expression pedal. The LXLT and Floor has 12 foot switches and an expression pedal. The PodGo has one input for one more controller as the HX and the LT where the floor has three expression pedals inputs and a dedicated amp controller out. The screen of the LXLT and floor are equal and are the biggest ones at 6.2 inches. Then we have the PodGo at 4.3 inches and finally the HX Tomp at 2.4 inches. The PodGo manages shorter loops than the other three units. As regards ADA conversion, they should all have a 24-bit 96 audio interface with 123 dB of dynamic range, which is a pretty good value. I'm not sure about the dynamic range of the PodGo and the HX Tomp, as I found no specification about them, while I found the dynamic range of the LX, LT and Floor in the Line 6 web page. As regards the USB channels, the PodGo has four channels, the HX6, and the LXLT and Floor has eight USB channels. Then we have the special features where I would mention the variax connections of the LXLT and Floor, along with the AES EBU connectivity and the SBD ports available only in the LX and Floor unit. Then we have the power needs where the LXLT and Floor have an internal power adapter. The PodGo requires 9 volts at 2500 amperes and the HX 9 volts at 3000 milliamperes. In my video comparison of the HX versus the GT1000 core, many of you have pointed out in the comment section that the HX Tomp draws between 800 and 1400 amperes, even if it is clearly written in the back of the HX that it needs 3000 milliamperes. As regards dimension and weight, the LX floor is pretty big and heavy, and I think here that the best one of the four is the PodGo, which has a really good compromise in terms of dimensions, weight, and a nice form factor. And finally, the PodGo is the cheaper of the four units, and the LX Floor is the most expensive. Actually, it is very expensive. So, summarizing, the PodGo can load lower quality IRs, it can only manage serial effect chains, it does not have MIDI ports and manage shorter loops. On the other hand, in my opinion, it has a very nice form factor and it is the cheaper unit if you want to enter the Line 6 pedalboard world. The HX Tomp is pretty limited in terms of number of effects blocks and obviously foot switches. The LXLT, in my opinion, offers a very good compromise of features even if it is a little bit too big and heavy for me. Finally, the Helix Floor is the flagship unit with a lot of features, but it is way too big and heavy for me and definitely too pricey. So final considerations here, and please notice that these are gonna be my personal opinions and you may not agree with me, and this is totally fine. Now, considering that in terms of uh, amp tones, they all sound equal. If I had to choose, I would decide with the following use cases in mind. If I needed an all-round solution for just recording at home, then I would go with the LXLT. And then the HX Tomp if I needed to save some money. Why? Well, because the Helix LT has a very flexible effect chain management. You can use more effects blocks and you can come out with the pretty crazy effects chains. So for just recording, I think that the Helix LT just let us be more creative and explore some pretty unusual sounds at a more cheaper price than the Helix Floor. In the case I needed to save some money, I would go with the HX Tomp, keeping in mind that in comparison of the LXLT, I'm gonna be really limited in terms of effect chain possibilities. If, on the other hand, I wanted an all-in-one solution for playing live without other effects pedals, I would go with the LXLT or the PodGo. Personally, I would not spend the extra money for the LX Floor 
and if I had to save uh, some money, I would go with the PodGo, knowing that I'm gonna lose the effect chain management flexibility of the Helix LT. Finally, if I needed a very compact unit, packed with tons of effects and it is gonna be paired with other effects like a Strymon Volante or Overdrive, I love like a Full Tone OCD or a Clone Centaur, well, I would probably go with the HX Stomp, as it has a way smaller footprint, allowing me to build a pretty compact, ampless pedalboard. Finally, actually, in my opinion, the best value for money is, uh, I think, the PodGo that has even the best form factor, in my opinion. It is way smaller and lighter than the Helix LT or the Helix Floor. Even if the effect chain management limitations derived from the limited DSP power of the PodGo could be an issue in some situations. I would say that the best units would be a PodGo with the DSP power of the Helix LT. I really hope that Line 6 will do something similar in the future. But now it's your turn. What are your opinions? Which unit better suit your need? Which unit would you buy? Why? Please let me know your precious and valuable opinions in the comment below. We have now reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and if you did it, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell and leave a thumbs up. See you in the next video. Bye bye.